All right, ready to jump into the world of video games. Always. But not just any games this time. We're talking about games that could change how we experience stories. Okay, I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. Ever hear of systemic story? I have, yeah. It's a pretty fascinating concept, actually. Um, at its core, it's about the game world adapts to what you do, not just like, here's three endings, pick one. Yeah, like less choose your own adventure, more like the game world adapts to you. Yeah, like, you know, Whoa. creating game worlds that feel truly responsive to your choices. Okay. Not just in terms of the story, but like the entire experience. Okay, so you're saying it's more than just yeah. picking dialogue option A or B. Right. Because we've all played those games where it seems like you have a choice, right. but it really just leads you down a slightly different path to the same ending. Exactly. Systemic Story aims to break free from those limitations. It's about building games where your actions have genuine ripple effects. So shaping not just the narrative, yeah. but the game world itself. You've shared some articles and notes on this, and the first thing that jumped out at me is how most story-driven games, even the ones with massive open worlds, still kind of box you in. Yeah. You know? That's a common criticism. Yeah. And for good reason. Think about it. You're exploring this vast world, but you're constantly bumping up against invisible walls, both literally and narratively. Right, like in The Witcher 3, which you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. You can roam freely, make choices that affect certain characters or quests, but Geralt's overall story, his ultimate goal, that's all predetermined. Exactly. And look, those pre-designed narratives can be amazing. They suck you in with beautiful cutscenes, emotional moments, the works. They do. But it does make you wonder, can we have true agency in games? Can we have a story that truly responds to our actions in a dynamic and unpredictable way? And that's where this systemic story comes in. Yeah. Like instead of following a script, the game world is designed to react to yeah. whatever you throw at it. You got it. Think of it like um, a tabletop RPG where you have a game master, a dungeon master, whatever you want to call him, right. who can improvise and adapt the story based on what the players do. That's the kind of dynamic storytelling potential that a systemic approach aims to unlock. So less pre-written dialogue freeze, mm. more emergent gameplay. Exactly. And the really exciting thing is we've got our hands on some notes and designs from a game developer who's like obsessed with making this a reality. Really? Oh, yeah. They start off by talking about this frustration that I think a lot of us gamers have felt. Okay. Even in those massive, you know, open world games. Yeah. We're often still kind of stuck on rails. Yeah, it's true. You think you have all these choices, but it's like... But it doesn't really matter because... It doesn't really change anything, does it? No. No matter what you do, it basically leads to the same outcome. Right. The world doesn't really change based on what you do. Yeah, and like, it's not really their fault. You know, can you imagine having to write a story for every single choice a player could make? Oh my gosh, no. It would be impossible. It would be a never-ending game. So this developer is thinking way outside the box. Okay. One of the articles you shared uses Wild at Heart, a side quest in The Witcher 3, right. to illustrate how a systemic approach could completely change the experience. Right. I remember that one. It involves this um, mysterious creature yeah. in a village with a dark secret. Pretty classic fantasy stuff. Right, but imagine playing through that quest. Yeah. But instead of just stumbling upon a note that reveals a crucial piece of information, you have to actually investigate. You could question villagers, observe their behavior, look for inconsistencies in their stories. So it becomes less about following the breadcrumbs the developers laid out for you and more about using your own intuition and deduction skills. Precisely. And those conversations wouldn't be limited to a handful of pre-written dialogue options. You could potentially have much more freedom in how you approach social interactions, influencing the narrative through your words and actions. Okay, now that sounds seriously cool. But how do you even begin to build a system that can handle that level of dynamic storytelling? We're not just talking about branching narratives here, but an entire world that responds to your every move. That's the million dollar question, and it's something that game developers are still actively figuring out. This dev is taking it to a whole other level. Essentially, imagine the game has a set of building blocks, right? Story elements, character archetypes, locations. Okay. 
Instead of scripting every little detail, the game uses these blocks to dynamically generate events and dialogue on the fly based on player choices and the overall themes of the game. So it's like the game has a set of rules and possibilities. Right. And then your choices determine how those possibilities play out. Exactly. And to make those interactions feel truly meaningful, the game would need sophisticated memory systems. Okay. NPCs would remember your past actions, promises you've made, even the emotions you've evoked. So if you're rude to a shopkeeper early on, right. they might remember that later and refuse to sell you something crucial. Exactly. Or maybe a character you helped out in a previous quest steps in to aid you unexpectedly. Expectedly. Right, and that's where things get really interesting. Okay. The dev talks about something called actor slots. Actor slots? What is that? So imagine this. You're playing the game, and you help out a villager, like, early on. Okay. You give them some food, or you clear out some monsters for them. You know, just a small thing. Yeah. In a systemic game, that little choice could actually come back later in a big way. Really? Yeah, because the system remembers that you helped them. Wow. So later on, when you're investigating the werewolf, yeah. that villager might suddenly become super important. No way. Yeah. Like they might have a key piece of information about the werewolf because they trust you. Because I helped them out earlier. Exactly. It's like the game is weaving a story around the things you do. That's insane. So like even small choices could have a huge impact later on. Right. It makes every playthrough feel different. That's incredible. But I do have one question. Yeah. How do you get players to care about these characters if you're not like writing their dialogue for them. That's a really good point. Like how do you make them feel real? Well, the dev talks about going deep on those relationships between characters, how even small details can make a big difference. Like what? Like maybe a character hesitates before they answer a question. Okay. Or they use the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Those little things could actually be clues for the player. Wow, so it's like, the game is giving you these subtle hints yeah. based on what the characters are thinking and feeling, even if their dialogue isn't like fully written out. Exactly. It's all about creating that sense of depth. That's wild. They even mention something called a flyweight pattern. Okay. I'm going to need you to break that down for me. Flyweight pattern. Basically, it's a way to make sure all those characters feel unique without overwhelming the system. Okay. So think of it like this. Every villager in the game has like a basic template. Okay, like a starting point. Exactly. Like yeah. maybe they all wear simple clothes and have a certain way of speaking. Right. But then on top of that, each villager has their own unique experiences and memories. Oh, okay. Shaped by the world and by how you interact with them. So they're not just like cookie cutter copies of each other. Yeah, imagine NPCs that aren't just like robots, you know, just saying their lines. Yeah. They'd have like their own psychology almost, you know? Oh, wow. Like they have their own motivations and relationships. Maybe they even like hold grudges mm -hmm. and they all react to you like real people. But what about conversations? Like how do those actually work in a system like this? So instead of writing out every single line of dialogue, Yeah. The dev wants to use something called dialogue templates. Dialogue templates. Yeah. Basically, it's like giving the system the tools to create conversations on the fly. It's about creating a sense of consequence and believability. And that goes beyond just NPC interactions. Imagine a game where the environment itself bears the scars of your actions. You choose to burn down a village. Those ruins would remain a constant reminder of the path you took. Wow. Okay. Now that is what I call immersive storytelling. Now you're getting it. Yeah, but let's be real for a sec here. Okay. I mean, is it even realistic to create a game with this level of systemic depth on a larger scale? I mean, it sounds amazing in theory, but can it actually be done? It's a huge challenge for sure. Yeah. No doubt about it. But that's what makes this whole concept so exciting. There are already developers out there experimenting with these ideas, and some games are already incorporating systemic elements in really interesting ways. And the dev points to games like The Sims, where they're already using AI to manage all those complex relationships between the characters. Yeah. And Watch Dogs, Legion, where you can literally play as anyone in the game world. Oh, yeah, that's right. So those games show that some of the pieces are already there. Okay, so it's not just a pipe dream then. Right. It sounds super complicated. Yeah. Well, the dev actually breaks it down into like these different levels of how you could put it together. Yeah. Like they suggest starting small, you know, almost like a proof of concept. Okay, so instead of going straight for like this big, epic, sprawling game. Yeah. You start with something smaller and more contained. Exactly. It's not about fancy graphics at this point. It's just, can we make a world that actually 
responds to what the player does. Okay, so like maybe even something like a text-based adventure. Totally. Just to really test out the system itself. Okay, yeah. I like that. Get the foundation right. Right. So once you've got that, then you can start building it up right, yeah. adding more layers. Yes, like a roadmap of how to get there, starting with what they call an adventure alpha. Adventure alpha. So like a really stripped down version. Exactly. Well, think about detective games. They're all about uncovering the truth, navigating complex social interactions, making deductions based on limited information. Right. You're piecing together clues, interrogating suspects, trying to figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. It's all about those choices you make as you investigate. Exactly. Imagine a detective game where you can interrogate suspects in a truly free-form way, analyze evidence, and draw your own conclusions. The game world wouldn't just present you with a linear path of clues. It would respond to your deductions, your lines of questioning, even your gut feelings. So, like, if you accuse a wrong person too early in the game, it could have serious consequences down the line. Exactly. Your choices wouldn't just lead to different endings. They'd shape the entire investigation, leading to a story that feels uniquely your own. And because these games typically revolve around a central mystery, the systemic elements could enhance the intrigue rather than distract from the overall narrative. Yeah, and then from there you can start to build it up, right? Exactly. Like, imagine adding in things like more complex psychology for the characters, maybe even like economies and political systems that all react to the player. Whoa, so the choices you make could actually, like, impact the fate of nations. That's the ultimate goal. That's a really cool concept. Mm. And it makes me wonder, what about the role of technology in all of this? Are there any advancements that could make systemic storytelling even more immersive and believable? That's a great question. One development that has the potential to revolutionize systemic storytelling is the advancement of large language models, or LLMs. The LLMs, like the one we're using right now to have this conversation. The very same. Imagine an LLM being used to power NPC dialogue. Instead of just having a limited set of pre-written lines, these characters could engage in much more dynamic and believable conversations, responding to your questions in a nuanced and contextually relevant way. No more talking to an NPC and getting the same three lines of dialogue over and over again. Exactly. LLMs could potentially draw upon a massive database of knowledge and language patterns to create truly dynamic and engaging conversations. Imagine being able to ask an NPC about their past, their motivations, their thoughts on a recent event, and getting a unique and insightful response each time. That would be mind-blowing. It would be like having a conversation with a real person constantly uncovering new layers of depth and complexity. Right. And with all the crazy advancements happening in AI and procedural generation, yeah. who knows what the future holds, right? But hold on. Wouldn't that be incredibly difficult to control? Yeah. What's stopping the AI from going off script and creating dialogue that doesn't make sense or doesn't fit the game world? That's the challenge, isn't it? Finding that balance between the power of AI and the guiding hand of human creativity, developers would still need to carefully craft the parameters within which the LLM operates, ensuring that the generated dialogue aligns with the game's overall tone and narrative structure. So it's not about replacing writers with AI. It's about giving writers new tools to create even more immersive and dynamic experiences. Precisely. LLMs could be used to generate dialogue variations, but ultimately it's still up to human designers to ensure that everything fits together coherently and delivers a compelling experience. So we've gone deep on the how, the tech, but let's bring it back down to earth for a sec. Okay. Why should we as players even care about all of this? It all comes down to agency, you know? Like, really feeling like your choices matter. Okay. Imagine a game world that doesn't just give you the illusion of choice, but actually reacts to every decision you make. Okay, so no more of that feeling where you make a choice and it doesn't really change anything. Exactly. And because of that, every playthrough would be totally unique. So no two players would ever have the same experience. Right, and the dev thinks that could lead to like a whole new level of emotional depth in games. And it makes you think about all those what-if moments you have when you're playing a game right totally like what if i had made a different choice back there this could actually make those what ifs a reality exactly it's about moving away from these carefully scripted stories and towards something that feels truly alive and unpredictable i am so on board with this systemic storytelling isn't just about creating more complex systems it's about tapping into a deeper level of player engagement when you know that your choices truly matter that the world remembers what you've done it changes how you play. It becomes less about following a predetermined path 
and more about role playing, about making decisions that align with your own personal values or the character you want to become. And because every player will approach the game world differently, every experience becomes unique. You might replay the same game multiple times and have completely different storylines unfold, all because of the choices you made and the consequences that rippled out from them. Wow. Okay. I'm intrigued. Paint me a picture. What does that actually look like for the player sitting down with one of these games? Imagine this. You're playing a sprawling RPG. Instead of your character's personality being defined by a limited set of dialogue options, it emerges organically from how you interact with the world. So if I'm constantly intimidating shopkeepers and picking pockets, yeah. word gets around that I'm a bit of a rogue. Exactly. But it's more nuanced than that, right? Maybe you develop a reputation for being ruthless in combat, but surprisingly generous to those in need. The world remembers not just your actions, but the intent behind them. No more good choice, bad choice binary. Mm -hmm. It's about the shades of gray and how we approach a situation. Yeah. And that complexity extends to everything. Remember those dynamic NTCs we discussed? Imagine starting a quest with one, but your actions inadvertently cause a conflict with their personal goals. Oh, so it's not just about me, the player, being the center of the universe. Yay. These NPCs have their own things going on, and I can screw those up royally even if I didn't mean to. Now you're getting it. It's about creating a world that feels truly interconnected, where your choices have unintended consequences, both good and bad. Oh, wow. And the beauty is you might not even realize the full impact of your actions until much later in the game. That's wild. It's like those moments in life where a seemingly small decision ends up having huge ramifications down the road. Right. Except now it's happening in our games. And that's where the true magic lies. Okay, I am sold. This all sounds incredible, but you've also mentioned that it's still early days for systemic storytelling. Yeah. What are the hurdles? What's holding this back from becoming the standard in game design? Well, for one, it's incredibly complex to design and implement. We're talking about creating systems that can account for a staggering number of variables, yeah. from player choice to NPC behavior to environmental factors. Right. It's one thing to program a branching dialogue tree. Right. It's another entirely to create a world that feels truly responsive and alive. Exactly. And then there's the challenge of balancing freedom with coherence. Mm -hmm. You want players to feel like they have agency, but you also don't want the story to devolve into complete chaos. It's a fine line to walk, for sure. Too much freedom and the story can feel aimless or disjointed. Too little. And we're back to those invisible walls we talked about earlier. So it's a combination of creative vision, technical prowess, and a little bit of faith that players are ready for this kind of experience. That's a great way to put it. But despite the challenges, I'm incredibly optimistic about the future of systemic storytelling. We're already seeing glimpses of its potential, and as technology advances and developers continue to push the boundaries, I think we're on the verge of a true revolution in how we experience and interact with video games. And that's what makes us such a fascinating time to be a gamer. We're on the cusp of something truly special, a new era of interactive entertainment where the line between player and participant becomes delightfully blurred. Well said. And on that note, it's time for us to wrap up this deep dive. This has been amazing. This developer has given us so much to think about, and they're really challenging us to reimagine what games can be. So to everyone listening out there, here's a final thought. What kind of systemic story world would you want to see? What possibilities are you most excited about? Let us know. Because the future of interactive storytelling might not be about writing stories, but about building the systems that let those stories tell themselves. And that opens up a whole universe of possibilities.